Well, there's two big projects in the class, yeah, but yeah. the first one is a sound alike, right, um, right. which I've, I'm kind of familiar with. I've heard some people do sound alikes before, but maybe you can tell us what a sound alike is and, and why it's important <laughs> to do an exercise like that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, the, the first project, the first project in the, in the course is the sound alike project. Mm -hmm. And basically what you're doing in the sound alike project is you are actually recreating a record of your choice um, that has a substantial grouping of live musicians. Mm -hmm. And you are recreating it um, technically, you are recreating it musically, and you are recreating it emotionally as okay. well. It's got to work on every single level, which is an amazing exercise. You know, people uh, you know, at Berkeley who have been doing this for years often at the end will just, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of these exercises that that you wind up learning so much from. And this is, there's a long tradition. If you were, if you were a composer mm -hmm. during the Renaissance, um, basically what you would do for the first few years is you would copy out scores. Right. You know, there were no printing presses, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, adding scores to the lexicon was a huge deal, but that's how you would learn. You would actually, you know, try and recreate the scores of the masters before you. Right. Um, and in some ways, this is very much in the same vibe. Um, it's funny because a lot of the folks that I've talked to, I actually used to make sound alikes myself when I was a kid, and, and practically everybody I know who, you know, when the, you first get a tape recorder, I, I, the first tape recorder I had that I could multi-track on was actually a Sony reel-to-reel -reel that had sound on sound. Okay. So we could record, you know, one track, me and Brent Davis, my, my good buddy who I was, you know, exploring this stuff with, we'd record the both of us playing on one track and then we'd play back with that and we'd have to, the trick was that you had to erase it while you were going, you know, sound on sound to the next thing. And we'd try to recreate these records and we learned so much. Um, in uh, in in January, actually, one of the, another interesting thing about this course is that I, I've actually done a ton of interviews with people, um, different producers and engineers and artists um, and songwriters about making records, and, and sprinkled in in all the lessons are interviews with people about the exact things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And Todd Rundgren, I remember this, um, he actually made a record in the 70s, in like 76 or so, called Faithful. Mm -hmm. And side A was actually Todd doing sound-alikes. Oh, Todd really? did sound-alikes of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and, um, and uh, uh, Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was doing these sound-alikes of these pivotal records that had meant a lot to him in his life. And the funny thing is that, that uh, Good Vibrations actually got released by the record company as a single and charted higher than Good Vibrations <laughs> by the Beach Boys and charted <laughs> when it was originally released, you know, oh which gosh. was, you know, and he didn't, it wasn't his intention, that's, he comes out in the interview, it wasn't his intention at all to, right. to release that, but, you know, DJ started playing it and saying, guess who this is, you know, it was kind of this little joke, but he really recreated the record. Um, you know, he did a sound alike basically. So you wind up learning so much about everything from from timbre to you know the way that parts put together to really about. There's so much that you wind up learning about conveying emotion in a record. You know mm -hmm. how absolutely a um, hundred percent into it that you have to be. You know, it, it, part of the Part of the difference I find between, you know, real records, record, you know, records that are super effective, that, mm -hmm. that we all know and love, that are on the radio and that are on our iPods and, you know, and that we purchase and that we, that we buy. Uh, one of the main differences between those and, and records made by people who are coming up who don't quite have it yet is that they do sweep us away. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not thinking about the fact that somebody is singing a song we're falling into the song, you know. We believe what they're saying, right. you know. It's kind of like watching a film. If you if you can kind of see the actor acting, mm -hmm. you know, it totally takes you out of it. You know, you really want to be totally into it and and believe what's going on. And the same thing is true in in recordings. And it's not just in the vocals. It can be in the drums. You know, is the drummer really playing with conviction? You know, it, it can be in in all the parts. And to really try and recreate something with the same conviction and the same emotional impact as the original is, is a big challenge. And it's, right. it's something that, that everybody, everybody that does this project learns so much from.